Putin decisively took up purges in his Ministry of Defense. The New York Times explained reasons. Complaints of incompetence and corruption in the highest echelons of the Russian military have haunted Vladimir Putin since the start of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. The need for change became clear when Russian troops failed in the vicinity of Kyiv, near Kharkov, and also after the march of Prigozhin's mercenaries to Moscow. The New York Times writes that Putin has all this time avoided any serious public steps that could be perceived as confirmation of criticism. Now that the battlefield crisis appears to be behind him and Prigozhin is dead, the Russian president has decided to act, replacing the defense minister for the first time in more than 10 years and making a series of corruption arrests among the ministry's top officials. Experts say Putin's latest moves likely indicate he has become more confident in his military prospects in Ukraine and in his political power. Russian troops are making progress in Ukraine, seizing territory around Kharkov and the Donbass, while Ukraine struggles with delays in US aid and shortages of ammunition and personnel. Senior officials in the Kremlin are optimistic. They likely view the military situation as stable enough to punish some of the military leadership for the past failures, says Michael Kaufman, an expert on the Russian military and a senior fellow at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Demand for change at the top of the Russian military has been building since the early days of the invasion. When stories spread of Russian soldiers going to war without proper food or equipment and losing their lives to incompetent military leaders, anger peaked after the aborted uprising led by Prigozhin, which US officials said was likely state-sanctioned murder. It was the leader of the Wagner who became the litmus test that forced the Russian authorities to think about corruption. The Russian leader appears to be turning against the very officials Prigozhin attacked. The first harbinger of change was the arrest of Timur Ivanov, Shoigu's protege and deputy defense minister, who was accused of accepting a large bribe. He denies any wrongdoing. Previously, Ivanov attracted the attention of Alexei Navalny's anti-corruption foundation due to his luxurious lifestyle. The Kremlin then announced that it had replaced Shoigu with Andriy Belusov and Shoigu was transferred to the Russian Security Council where he has access to the president but no control over money. Belusov has no military experience but boasts a relatively clean image and a clean government career. Maria Enkvist, deputy head of Russia and Eurasia Research at the Swedish Defense Research Agency, noted that if Putin wants to win the war, corruption is not the way to go. At the same time, she called high-level corruption in Russia a feature, not a mistake. U.S. can immediately change the situation in Kharkiv region by lifting the only ban. The United States of America is able to quickly change the situation in the Kharkov direction if it allows the Ukrainian army to fire American weapons into Russian territory. This opinion was expressed by George Barros, an analyst at the American Institute for the Study of War, when commenting on the White House ban. The Ukrainians cannot confront the Russians until they cross the international border, the Wall Street Journal quotes him as saying. According to the analyst, the United States is able to immediately change the battlefield in the Kharkov region if this ban is lifted. The current situation allows Moscow to transfer troops and weapons to the front much more effectively than in other regions where they have to disperse and camouflage positions behind the front line. In a recent interview, Volodymyr Zelensky said that the authorities have repeatedly asked American leader Joe Biden and other partner countries to give permission to use their weapons for such attacks. According to Western media reports, the White House is against this. The Pentagon says it has not changed its position on this issue. This week, a group of congressmen signed an appeal to Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin asking that Ukraine be given permission to strike Russian strategic targets under certain circumstances. Two weeks after Russian troops crossed the border to open a new front in the Kharkiv region, the offensive stopped in the town of Volchansk, less than 10 kilometers south of the border, and in Lipsy in the southwest. Military commander Alexander Sirsky announced this. The Kremlin's new front forced Kyiv to rush soldiers into the country's northeast, depleting reserves as Moscow stepped up its offensive in the east. Deep State, a mapping service maintained in collaboration with Ukraine's Ministry of Defense, has shown no significant advances by Kremlin forces as part of the Kharkiv offensive since Monday. Sirsky said that the Russian military command was sending reserves to support the local offensive, but to no avail. Fighting in the eastern region of Donetsk intensified as the Kremlin gained momentum 
using its advantage over Ukrainian ammunition stockpiles and manpower. Moscow's forces have advanced near the strategically located town of Chasov Yar, which they are seeking to capture at any cost, Sirsky said.